Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to my tutorial here. Today's tutorial is going to be making this magical assembly thing come together, where a device seems to magically come together by magic or somehow like that. You see these a lot in techie and historical TV shows. Tensioned bands will hold the tops of the ribs together. The deck layer will add further rigidity. And what we have here is, in actuality, Verbius Car. I don't know if I pronounced that right. If I haven't, I'm sorry. It is actually it was actually built in 1672, the very first self-propelled vehicle. It was a toy, so pretty basically a uh, the world's first uh, self-propelled dinky car. But you can learn more about this car and the man who built it, Ferdinand Ver Verbist, on my channel. Neglected histories. Histories you may have never heard of, but are fascinating nevertheless. So please check it out sometime when you have the time. Please do so. All right, getting back to the car here. As you can see, I haven't shaded anything. No touches or anything. And that's because afterwards, once we uh, do our special effects, I'm going to do an Olympic cache. All right. And once you do an Olympic cache, it doesn't translate the uh, textures or shaders used at any rate, so may as well just wait to do that till the end. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is this boiler here, all right? So let's press Control-1 in order to isolate it, like so. Oh, let me tell you, when I was a little kid in grade school, I think grade one or something like that, I had this English teacher from England, and she always used to say, like so, like so. Oh, my God, I felt like sewing her mouth shut. She was so annoying, but ah. I know that's in my head right now for some reason. Like so, like so. At any rate, the tool we will be using is the multi-cut tool. All right, it's right here under modeling. Mesh tools, multi-cut tool. Let us go into its attributes here. And what we need here is slice tool. This is what we're going to be using. So we're going to delete faces and we're going to extract faces. And we want to go from down to up and up from down. So it's going to be the ZX axis here. All right, boom. All righty like so. Like so, okay, this, is when, this one's gonna come down. This is gonna be the one that comes down. And guess what? We can animate this, we can keyframe it. Bet you never would've guessed. All right, and now we need a second one because I want it to kind of meet in the middle. So let's do another one. Click, same thing. And we're gonna go to our history here. And now we have both of them. This one, however, is not orientated quite right. So I'm going to click this circle here in order to get the uh, gizmo thing for turning it. And I'm going to press the letter J, all right? J. So you can uh, go to manipulate it to the cardinal degrees. And you want it right there. Awesome. All righty -o. So this one's going to come up like so. And this one at the bottom here, it's going to come down like so, all right? So here we go. Now we've got to get these together. And quite often what you'll find is, yeah, if you go a little bit too far, you're going to get this little stupid leftover piece here. I hate it. If anybody can tell me how to get rid of this, I, I don't know. But one thing to do is minimize it as much as possible by getting them as close together as possible until you kind of only got one little fragment piece of it left. Alrighty, and now after we put in all the keyframes and animate, we'll wait for it. Here it comes. There you go. Magic. Organically grown out of thin air. You can't beat that, can you? All right, now we're going to concentrate on another part of the car. We are going to try to grow the uh, under chassis here. And to make things easy for myself, I'm just going to do it one way. This time from the YZ axes. Back and forth like so. Take it to there. Try our best to get rid of that last little bit. And if I can't, I'll just... I know, use After Effects to get rid of it with uh, Alpha Paint Effects or something. Paint it out. 
I shall keyframe it by going to the beginning of the timeline. And I'm going to fast forward a bit. I'm going to slide the tick a little forward because I don't. I want it to start a little later in the animation. Maybe about uh, 14. There we go. Yeah, that'll be good. And keyframe that by pressing S. And then just grow it out all the way. And there you go, the under chassis. I'm going to click out of isolation mode. I'm going to press F8 to go back into uh, object mode. And rewind, and you see what we got here. First one thing grows out, and then the other. Kind of cool, I think. Okay, so now let's uh, deal with the rest of the assembly. I want uh, we'll start with the wheels. I want the wheels to kind of fly together as if out of nowhere. All right, so I'm going to pick a certain spot on the timeline for when I want them to actually arrive. Then I'm going to select them all. Like so, like so. And... Uh, then I'm going to go to the end of the timeline, or close enough to it, like right here. And of course, I'm going to start moving my wheels. Way far away, out of camera frame, wherever camera frame we might choose to film this in. Or render this in, render this in I should say. Alrighty, yo. And then of course, I'm going to select them all. And uh, press S. On both sides, press S. And there we go. Whoop. They all fly together. Now we'll uh, do the same thing with the axes here. Let's select the spot. I want them to come in just before the wheels come in so that they're ready to shish kebab the wheels when they come in. So I'll, I'll keyframe it there. And I'm going to have them come in from opposite angles or opposite directions. So I'm going to click this one way over here. And I'm going to take this axis and slide it in the other direction, way over there. And then keyframe it, press S, and there we go, boing. Okay. I take it from here on out, you pretty well get the idea. Maybe I can do the same thing with this gear shift thing. I wanted to come in just before the body kind of cages it out, so before it uh, gets shut off from getting in there, so way over there. And then zoop, it comes in just as the uh, under chassis is finished being formed. Now, as for the rest, for the textures here and there, I think what I'm probably going to do is just like this brace here or this under cauldron thing for the boiler is animate the textures themselves, uh, animate the actual transparency transparency of them, I should say. Meaning that, uh, oh, here I'll go, I'll show you right here. If I go to transparency, and I completely put transparency to 100, or actually start off at completely opaque, and then keyframe it, and there you go. Of course, I'll be doing it to the individual textures for those uh, two objects, which I'm going to use some sort of iron shader for. And it'll look like they're materializing as the rest of the assembly is coming together or growing from in out, from, <laughs> from in out of itself type of thing. Okay, and uh, that pretty well brings it to an end. I mean, not much more you need to know. One thing to keep in mind, you cannot delete your history. If you delete your history, you will lose that uh, slice tool assembly special effect we did. It'll be frozen at whatever apply in the timeline you deleted your history. So in order to get around that, one thing you can do is an Olympic cache which is just in your uh, animation menu set under, you guess a cache, go to Limbic Cache, and then select whatever objects you want to cache and select Export Selected Limbic. All right, and you can get a tutorial on how to do Limbic caches. They're pretty simple. They're very simple, and then just import it. And if you do it that, that way, you'll still lose the special effect when you delete history, but you'll be able to re-import it at any time, so you've kind of baked it out into as a series of files that uh, you can reaccess at any point you want to. 
All right. Now to show you one more thing, I'm just going to show you one more thing. I'm going to create a spear here. I'm going to grow it out here a bit. And once again, I'm going to use the multi-cut tool. Right there, go to slice, go to slice. All righty oh, we're going to go from up to down. I'm um, actually, let's go the other way. So I'm just going to press J to click this around like so, like so, like so. Now, what I wanted to show you is, as you can see, it's hollow because it's because it was a boiler. I wanted to make it hollow. Water needs to go inside, right? But say you wanted it to be a solid object of some kind. So what you can do is select the edges in edge mode and then go to mesh fill hole all right i'm sorry you cannot see my drop down menu in this screen capture i don't know why that's happening but trust me it's under mesh fill hole all right and now you filled in the hole obviously for the first section at least you have it filled in now if you want to do the second section or continue or other continuous sections you just have to repeat the process, all right? So I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to select all the edges, go to Mesh, Fill Hole. And there you go. For those two sections there, and you got it one, two. And you can continue going up or down, just keep going, filling in the hole. And that pretty well concludes this the, uh, tutorial. Okay, so you know what I'm going to say here, right? You know, you know what's coming. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and click the notification bell. <laughs> well, I'll do it if you want to or not, but at uh, any rate, thank you for watching my tutorial, and I hope to see you on my channel. Take care. Bye.